Hello, this is Mr. AC uh, in our Algebra 2 class. Uh, I want to go over how to find the inverse of a problem like this right here. So, when you see something that says this, uh, a lot of a lot of students and even sometimes myself I've done this mistake is I write this as f raised to the negative one of x. Well, that's incorrect. That's actually false. You do not want to say that. What you want to say is find the inverse of f of x. That's what that actually represents. It's just that mathematicians are lazy and they don't want to actually write that out every time. So we got to find the inverse of f of x. Well. Luckily for us, we know what f of x is. We know it's the square root of 2x plus 1 minus 3. Now, a lot of you requested problems with square roots, so this is why I wanted to do this problem. All right, so first thing I want to do is I just want to write, re rewrite this as y equals the square root of 2x plus 1 minus 3. Now remember that when we apply the inverse, uh, we switch the input with the output, right? So we have a point up here. 2, 3, in order to find the inverse of that point, well, we switch x, okay, our x becomes our y, and our y becomes our x, so that's why we get 3, 2, we just basically switch them. That's the same thing here with the equation, it's no different, so we got to switch the y into the x, and then our x into the y, that's applying our the, the, the idea, the property of, of, of an inverse, right, so we get x equals... 2y plus 1 minus 3. Okay. Now, I want to isolate y. I want to solve for y. So, I want to move everything to the other side. Well, we always need to undo any adding or subtracting. Well, we see that there's a subtracting sign. So, how do we undo subtracting? You are correct. Once again, yes, we need to add 3 to both sides. So, we're going to go ahead and add 3. We're going to add 3 to both sides, okay? And when we do that, minus 3 plus 3, well, that's just 0. So here we get x plus 3, okay? So I'm going to write it down, x plus 3 equals, and then what's left on the right-hand side? Well, that's just this right here, the square root of 2y plus 1, okay? Now, this is the part that maybe most of you kind of got a little bit stuck on. So, I want to write down a few things, okay? And that's that the square root of x is the same thing as x raised to the 1 half. Okay? If you have something that says 3 cubic root of x, well, that's the same thing as x raised to the 1 third. Okay? So, if I have 4 cube root of x, that's the same thing as x raised to the 1 fourth. If I have 5 cube root of x, well that's just the same thing as x raised to the 1 fifth. Okay, so I bet you could imagine what 6 root of x is. Well that's just x raised to the what power? That's right, you got it right. That's 1 6. Great job. Okay. So I wrote that down just as a bunch of examples, okay? So that anytime you see uh, a, cube, a 3 here, the 3 cube root of x is just x to the 1 third. Here we have the square root of x, and that just becomes 1 x raised to the 1 half. The reason why you don't see a 2 here is because in the square root, it's got the word square in it, right? That means that we're, that we're that's the idea of square rooting, which is 2. That's why they don't really show it here, but really they're, 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 you could say that there's a kind of like an, a, a 2 there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and erase some stuff. I just wanted to give you an example. Okay, as I erase this down, the nice thing is that you got the power of a rewind button to, to go back in case you need to look at something one more time. Okay, so I just wanted to write this up here so I have more room in this problem because these can uh, be a little lengthy. Okay, so one thing I want to get go over now is that the square root of x, right, we just said that, the square root of x is the same thing as x to right, x raised to 1 half, so anything inside the square root is just going to be that raised to the 1 half. So we can rewrite this as parentheses 2y plus 1, and we close our parentheses, raised to the 1 half. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and erase this now. 
what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and write this just a tiny bit bigger, okay? So x plus 3 equals 2y plus 1 raised to the 1 half. Okay. Maybe I'll make this a little bit prettier. I apologize. It's all the same thing. I just want to make it look a little more presentable on the camera. All right. Now, just like before, okay, I'm going to put my parentheses here. There's kind of like a one here, and you can check out why on the previous video. I'm going to need to do something here so that one half multiplied by one number, uh, you, can, you can see that they'll cancel out, or you can think of it as uh, one half times what gives you one. Well, one way to think about that is almost like you're flipping it. So you're going to get two over one. Now, let me show you why that's the case. 1 half times 2 over 1. Well, you can already see that our 2's are going to 2 divided by 2. Our 2 is going to, in a way, you can say cancel out and we get 1 over 1, which is 1. But one way to think about it is 1 times 2 is 2. And then 2 times 1 is 2. So 2 divided by 2, well, that's just 1. Okay, so now we can see here that these cancel, but if we do something on one side, we still have to do it to the other side. Okay, so what's 1 times 2 over 1? Well, that's just 2. So, I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Here, we're going to get x plus 3. Okay, we're just going to get left with a 2 here, because we basically multiply by 2 in our exponent, and we get 2y plus 1. Now, I'm still trying to isolate y, but now this becomes a little bit more simpler and we kind of know what to do. Well, we want to undo the addition sign, so we're going to, to undo the addition. That's subtracting, so we're going to subtract 1 to both sides. Okay, and we're going to get x plus 3 squared minus 1 equals 2y. Now, I want to make a quick note, okay? And the quick note is this, that when we subtract 1, we do not subtract 1 from in here, okay? We cannot do that because the x plus 3 is bounded. It is bounded by the square, all right? So this is really x plus 3 times x plus 3. We cannot, when we have an exponent and we have our parentheses and it's bounded by this exponent, we cannot subtract 1 inside. It has to go outside. So make a note of that because that is one of the most common mistakes. Now we have 2 times y. Well, the opposite of multiplication is division. So now we're going to divide 2. And when we divide 2, we're dividing 2 to the whole thing. Okay? Well, 2 divided by 2, well, that's just 1. So I'm going to clear that out. And now we are done. We essentially, y equals, and we have our function over here to the to the left. Now we we could write this as f the inverse of f of x equals that. Now the reason why I wasn't able to do it step by step is because I was running out of room. And there we just found the inverse of the square root of two x plus one minus three, which is this right there x plus 3 squared minus 1 all divided by 2. Okay, I hope that helped. Let me know if you still have any questions that you might need to ask. Make sure to check out the other video, and maybe both of these will both help you on how to kind of go about solving this. Thank you.